everybody! This week's project is going to be a little poplar bowl. Um, I picked this piece of poplar up off of the side of the road, I think in April of 2019. It was one of the first pieces I started to grab when I got my first lathe. Um, I didn't have any anchor seal at that point, so I was just using a mixture of yellow wood glue thinned out with water to seal the ends. Um, and I didn't really do much other than knock the corners off with the chainsaw that I had at the time. So um, you can see that I didn't do a very good job of, of chainsawing this evenly. Um, it's pretty lopsided. One of the sides of the log is much, is much higher than the other. So it really uh, takes me quite a long time to get through the bark all the way around and get down into the wood layers. I wasn't actually going to do anything with this blank. I had kind of tossed it into the maybe go to the fireplace burn pile. Um, but I pulled it out again around the holidays and looked at it and thought, well, maybe I should do something with it. And then I stuck it back off in the corner again. Um, one of the things that I've been wanting to try is to do a paint pour over a bowl. Um, I thought it might be kind of cool to have a little something extra going on in some of the pieces that are just a little bit plain where there isn't any interesting grain or um, you know there's only so much that you can do with the shape due to the size of the blank or whatever. So I thought this might be a good candidate for one of those bowls and that was my intention when I got started with this was just to make a small bowl and then I was going to do a paint pour over it and see how that came out. and. Um, if that's something that I might like to do some more of in the future. However, as I'm going along here, I'm realizing that this piece of wood actually has some kind of cool things going on in it. Um, there's a little bit of spalting and there's a little bit of, um, I'm not sure if curly is the right description for that, but there's a little bit of the grain that has a little bit of curl in it. Um, looks like curly maple. And, um, the more I got to looking at this, the more I thought, well, I don't want to cover this up with paint. It's it's really a pretty little bowl. So at this point, I've kind of decided that I'm not going to do a paint pour over it. I'm just going to make a pretty little bowl. And oh my gosh, you guys, I'm almost to 5,000 subscribers. So I'm going to be doing another giveaway for 5,000. What do you think I should do? A bowl, a little lidded pot, little lidded box kind of a thing. Let me know in the comments because uh, it's going to be coming up here soon. As a matter of fact, it might be the next video. So y'all need to help me figure out what to make for the giveaway. I used a wormwood screw on this bowl. A lot of a lot of turners use it. I don't use it a whole lot, but um, it is kind of nice to just be able to put it in the chuck, and then you've also got a nice little spot for your tail center to go in.
I'm just doing a little sheer scraping, getting the surface cleaned up. I always check my tenon and make sure it's still secure before I pull the tailstock off. So I still have some issues with this bowl um, getting some, I'm not sure if they're technically ridges or grooves or if it's really more of a, of a burnishing um, way out here on the edge. Um, and what I'm trying to do here is to get just the very edge as thin as I want it and then not go back to it. You know, basically leave as much meat in the bowl as I can to help dampen the vibration and keep it from flexing too much. And then just go a little bit at a time down the inside of the wall and clean it up. Um, but then not go back after it. I'm not really always very good at that, but um, that was my plan. So I was just taking some really light passes with the negative rate carbide, seeing if I could smooth that out just a little bit. I really need to take a day and just do some practicing um, with my bottom bowl gouge. This is just my regular um, fingernail grind 5 8 bowl gouge I'm using here. Um, I I don't I just don't have a good feel for the for the uh, bottom bowl gouge yet. I got to figure out how to make a clean flat pass across the bottom of the bowl. Um, I struggle doing that with any of the tools. Um, I've, here you can see I've gone through my 5 8 bowl gouge, that's my 3 8 bowl gouge, and uh, I've done the negative rate carbide too, which seems like I ought to be able to get a flat bottom with that, but I frequently have little ridges or lumps in the bottom of the bowl, and that can sometimes be problematic. I don't really understand why I have so many um, little marks on the outside of the bowl. Uh, I did not see them there after I got done shear scraping, so um, I'm not sure if that's just a, a product of, you know, maybe I'm pushing on the bevel too hard, not, you know, not gliding and, and uh, creating some friction and some burnishing marks, or I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I spent a ridiculously long time sanding this bowl because I had decided that I was just going to put, you know, finish on it and I had to get all those little marks out. So um, I did some power sanding with the lathe on, I did some power sanding with the lathe off, and then I went back with some um, sandpaper strips and uh, I spent way longer sanding this bowl than I normally do. I, partially, I guess, it's probably because Poplar's pretty soft.
So I finally got it to where I was happy with the finish, no, well, with the surface. And I wiped it off with denatured alcohol and then uh, put on a coat of one pound shellac as my sealer. I cut that back with a gray scotch bright pad. And I'm doing the Axe Abrasive Sanding Paste. You can see I'm getting just a little bit of vibration there out of the edge of the rim. I don't know if there was just enough moisture left in it that it moved a tad or if it's uh, harmonics. Um, I don't really understand why that happens, but it wasn't terrible. I was able to get a really nice finish with the X uh, abrasive paste and now I'm doing the polishing paste. And it's beautiful. And I'd be lying if I told you that after the fact, I hadn't thought about stopping the video right here. Because we're about to come to the problematic part of this poplar bowl. You can see I have a nice big kind of shoulder um, between the bottom of the bowl and the tenon. I do that because I have a tendency to go through the bottom of the bowl so often. Um, which is part of the problem because I can't seem to get the inside bottom flat, so I go over it more than I ought to. So um, I'm just trying to take the tenon off here, and uh, I decided that I might try a little foot on this bowl, which I don't normally do, but I thought that might be kind of interesting. So um, I was going to make a little foot. I just got a new carbide tool. I got a um, axe carter I guess it's axed by Carter. Um, I got a diamond tool because the one that I have just doesn't really work right. Um, and I'm just getting ready to take the tenon off, the little bitty nub part there. And yeah, rats. And so now what I'm going to do. Okay, so my first plan was I just drilled a nice flat hole with the Forstner bit out of the center, and I was going to just put a tiny little walnut plug in there. Well, I didn't really know how that was going to work out. I didn't know how I was going to get it to keep... I didn't know how I would keep it in there. There wouldn't be enough glue surface. So I put my sanding disc on and did the best I could to sand the whole bottom of this flat. I had to get rid of that little foot that I made. I wasn't sure if I should do a contrasting wood or um, something that would kind of go with it. I had this little piece of elm that was a cutoff of something I'm going to do a river table out of, and I thought that would look nice. Unfortunately, when I glued it together, I forgot to line the grain up, and so that looks really crappy, but whatever. Also, <laughs> Even though I've pushed it up against the sanding disc, which was flat, um, I'm not sure if I didn't sand the bottom completely flat or level or whatever, but you can see how wonky this is. So I have to go um, back and forth about 11 billion times here trying to get it somewhere close to being balanced, and then I'm going to just go for it.
So I'm making another tenon out of that little piece of elm that I glued to the bottom and now we're gonna try this again. I was hoping that I was not going to have to really go over the rest of the bowl, but um, it just wasn't lined up well enough. So I end up having to um, just do a little bit of scraping along the entire outline of the bowl just to, to blend that new piece on the bottom in. But you can see when I stop the lathe here that uh, it's definitely not even. I've got finish left on half of it and no finish left on the other half. Here's the bane of my existence. And then I sanded again because, you know, everybody loves to sand. So at this point, I'm back to thinking that I'm just going to do a paint pour over it because, um, you know, <laughs> I've, I've got this funky plug that's in the bottom of it now and, um, I didn't line the grain up on the inside and I thought, well, okay, this will just be a, another candidate for that. So again, I'm having a really hard time getting it back on the lathe straight enough. I finally said that was close enough. And <laughs> yeah, that's where I put that mark. I finally decided that that was close enough. I was just gonna make it work. Now, let's see if we can do this without going through the bottom of the new bottom. Still a little proud in the middle. And now I've got just a little bit of concave in the center there so it'll sit flat. Now I'm going to try this new tool out again. Oh, that's lovely. Yes, this is, this is very nice. I like this tool. I think we're in business. So then after thinking, okay, I'm going to go back to doing a paint pour over it, I decided, no, I'm not going to do a paint pour over it. So um, since I'd already taken it off the lathe, there really wasn't a very good way to do this. I just stuffed it up against there with a friction fit and put another coat of shellac on it. And um, I didn't do the, um, the X abrasive paste on this. I just put a coat of the polishing paste on the outside here. I couldn't get the speed up very high because it's not really in balance and it's just really being held on there with the friction between a tennis ball. But I got it I got it high enough to where I could hold the paper towel down and get it to melt. And then I just did the inside by hand with a buffing mandrel. And it's really pretty if you don't look at the inside. I don't mind the the plug on the bottom from the outside. The inside, uh, if I had made that straight in line with the rest of the grain, I'd probably be okay with it, but I'm just going to not think about it. Thank you guys for watching. I am going to do a paint pour here sometime in the not too distant future, so um, keep your eyes out for that. In the meantime, y'all be safe out there.